Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Run-Up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. And my name is Uchechuku Onodo. Okay, today we have uh, lined up for your enjoyment, uh, if you may call it that way, uh, some issues that are at the front burner in our country. Uh, one of those issues is the flood that is ravaging the states. 32 states are affected out of the 36 states. So one way or the other, one person is affected mm -hmm. right now watching us. And I'm sure that maybe their families back home or uh, themselves are affected because even in Lagos, we've seen flooding ravaging uh, the people and the places in Lagos. And it's usually never a very good sight to mm. see. Yeah. And we also are going to be looking at uh, holding political office holders accountable. Uh, this is a con conversation that often comes up and uh, the blame game usually takes a huge mm. part of this conversation. And we're going to be looking at it later on on the show, so you want to stick around for that. And then we also have a surprise guest that is coming. Yesterday we were supposed to bring him on, but because we were pressed for time we couldn't bring him on but you know sometimes things just happen uh, by divine intervention so today will be a very good day to bring him but we are not going to let the cat out of the bag and we are hoping that you're going to be there until that time that we bring him on but the show promises to be great let's take a short break and when we return we begin with our first guest This year, there has been unprecedented flooding in many parts of Nigeria. According to Sadia Omar Farouk, Nigeria's Minister for Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, 603 persons have so far died due to the disaster caused by the floods, while 2,407 persons have been injured, with another 1,300,000 persons currently displaced. The federal government further announced that 82,000 houses have been destroyed, 108,000 hectares of farmland and infrastructure on 332,000 hectares of land have been damaged. Every year, various parts of the Nigerian Federation get affected by floods despite warnings by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMED. For example, in August this year, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, warned that 233 local government areas in 32 states of the Federation would experience flooding. Situating that prediction on the report issued by NIMET and asking state authorities to take preventive action. NEMA also provided advisory letters and risk maps to states to help them in designing and implementing mitigation measures. When the floods came, as predicted, however, it caught states, local governments and communities napping, resulting in the calamity cited at the top of this background story. While global warming undoubtedly accounts for the increased flooding and its frightening large-scale impact in Nigeria and elsewhere, it must be stressed that there are other contributory factors. For example, during excessive rainfall, some of the dams in this country are opened when filled beyond their limits in order to avoid them bursting and further aggravating the environmental problem caused by the downpour. Communities living along the watercourse of such dams get immediately overwhelmed because persons living in these places do not evacuate. It has also been observed that rivers that have shrunk over the years are rapidly filled during torrential rainfall, resulting in these rivers reoccupying their seemingly dried up riverbeds. In situations where those riverbeds have been encroached upon by developers, the houses built are almost instantly submerged, leading to deaths displacement and injury to members of the affected communities. The action of some communities may also invariably result in flooding. For instance, when they build houses directly on dried riverbeds, when they throw refuse into rivers and wetlands, or when they indiscriminately throw waste materials into canals, all of such action, as these have been identified as being partly or largely responsible for flooding or exacerbating the disaster caused by global warming, of equal importance is the action or inaction of neighboring countries who are members, together with Nigeria, of the various water governing authorities such as the Niger Basin Commission, established in 1963 and comprising of Bene, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Chad, Côte d'Ivoire, Guinea and Niger, in either adhering or not adhering to the water governing protocols of the Commission. Any illegal construction of dams on main rivers or their tributaries, as well as release of water from those dams without warning or notice to downstream countries, 
has often resulted in devastating flooding of riparian states. While the current flooding in the middle belt of Nigeria has not been attributed to any neighboring country, it is instructive to observe that the release of water from the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon in July and October 2012 affected Benue and Kogi states in Nigeria, resulting in 431 persons dead and 1.3 million displaced. As in that case, water release from that dam usually flooded communities in Nigeria along the River Benue drainage basin. It should be mentioned, too, that the River Benue originates from Cameroon and at 183 kilometers is the longest tributary of the River Niger. It is saddening to observe that many states and local government authorities do little or nothing to prevent encroachment on riverbanks or construction of houses in low-lying areas that are prone to flooding. When disasters invariably occur and to mitigate the impact of such environmental calamity, the Nigerian constitution provides for an ecological fund domiciled under the exclusive legislative list and being therefore administered by the federal government. Many states have benefited from the federal intervention in the disbursement of this fund, but some observers worry that such financial support may not have been judiciously utilized by some beneficiary states just as they also decry the lack of preventive measures by such states to stop the type of calamity we have witnessed so far this year as a result of flooding. We're glad to know you're still there and watching us. It's still the run-up and we're moving straight to our next uh, uh, part of the show as it is. I don't want to call this segment. Mr. Agbro Benson is the director of uh, the NRSC. In NRSC, Disaster Management Headquarters in Abuja, and we're so glad to have him join us. Good morning, Mr. Benson. Hello, Mr. Benson, are you there? Yes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Oh, we're doing great. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on the run-up. Thank you for having us. All right. So uh, it's not news that there's been a lot of flooding ravaging the entire country for a couple of months now. Uh, we would like to know, what is your organization doing to help mitigate the current situation in the country? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the Nigeria Red Cross is doing much. Um, a lot of uh, activities are going on since the flood started. We all know what happened and, um, during the, uh, from around the 15th of September when um, the flood started from the northern part of the country. Uh, our volunteers are everywhere. Uh, you are aware that the Nigerian Red Cross is operational in all the 36 states and the FCT, so we have people in all the branches. So when it started, the first thing they did was to join the process of search and rescue. Uh, a lot of the branches uh, went with uh, work with the state emergency management agencies and other government agencies who were involved. We don't work with, um, alone. And uh, they brought out people who were all over the places, who were hanging on trees. Some of them were in their houses flooded. Those who have the uh, story duty were on top of them. A lot of things. And uh, they also have, um, we have what we call the emergency who made sure that those who were injured are treated, minor wounds, calls, here and there, and those you can save from the water to prevent drowning also. Okay, uh, well, we're wondering how much of uh, these people you have been able to cover. It's 32 states we're hearing that are being affected. So how much of these have you covered so far in your intervention? <laughs> Are you still there, Mr. Benson? I'm here. Yes. So how many of these yes. areas have you been able to cover, and what are the current realities of the flooding in these areas? Like I told you, we are present in all the states, and um, it might just some states are more active. We call them branches, the Red Cross uh, uh, branches in each of the states. And in the local government, we also have what we call the division. So a lot of, uh, of these people um, have been treated. Uh, and uh, what we have is a situation where you, 
you are here at uh, Abuja, for instance, and then you have this um, report coming in from different parts of the country, um, telling you what they are doing and the actions they have taken to help people who are in need. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Benson. Uh, but I'd like to ask you this question. Uh, what, what has been the biggest challenge that you know, you've faced uh, in the course of doing the good work that you're doing? Uh, well, uh, uh, there are so many, but um, more, first and foremost was the issue of access. When I say access, not because of any other thing, but you know the flood and how it started. So um, a lot of uh, issues, you will have noticed some even in the media and the social media, how um, our volunteers in Kogi, where they're moving from one place to another, even in water, uh, wearing a life jacket. So uh, there are some areas that are so flooded that even the Red Cross member, be, having been trained, are able to reach. And so we, we, we had to work with some other agencies like NEMA, uh, like the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, who have other motorized uh, uh, access to go into such places. And then secondly, is the issue of resources. Yes, human capital, we have them. We have more than 800,000 volunteers all over the country. But you agree with me that to mobilize this no uh the network wouldn't let us talk to mr benson uh, but i think he made the major points um, yeah. he pointed out answered most of the questions yeah, I, I know that it, it, it is not their responsibility but i would have loved to know in this interaction with other agencies whether they are doing something to make sure that this kind of a thing doesn't happen anymore exactly. uh, in our country because a lot of lives have been lost exactly and well, it's a natural disaster, but some other things have been listed as well as things that might cause this flooding. For instance, like in Lagos, people like to drop things inside the canals mm -hmm. and waterways and all that. So when water comes, it's very easy to get into the streets and lives could be lost. Maybe we should talk more about the attitude of people towards uh, envir the environment generally. And now that we are already in this situation, what would be the way forward? These are questions I would have wanted, yeah. wanted him to answer about that, all right? Uh, thank you so much to Mr. Benson for uh, answering us in the first place. The run-up will continue after this quick break. Stay with us, don't go anywhere.